welcome you back to Gillette Stadium here in Foxborough. Our halftime festivities behind us as we're just about set for the opening kick of the second half. The Dolphins at the line ready for their next drive. They're obviously right now in the driver's seat, comfortably ahead. They've scored on a couple straight possessions, Charles. And I mean, for them, I guess it's just more of the same, right? Keep doing what you've been doing. Yeah, it's not typical for us to see games out of reach in the third quarter. Right now, they're unstoppable in this one. And seeing how they just came out onto the field, it does appear like they're done scoring points in this one. They look awfully confident. Second down, here's Mostert again. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. 63 yards now on the ground on just seven carries. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time, and making it work. Two and now on first down. That one complete to Hill. And that'll be good for eight yards to the 45. So, Charles, you know, for this offense, we've been talking all year about how difficult it would be to run the table. And you gave me your chances early in the year. You thought maybe 25%. A few weeks ago, you thought closer to 50, but not quite 50. Now, here they are, 15-0. This is happening, isn't it? I think it is, Brandon, because I do believe this team is too invested, too well coached to fall asleep at the switch now. And I think it ultimately benefits them to stay engaged all the way through the season because make it to the finish line, then they get the open week to refresh and re-energize. But if you get off the gas now, that can really hurt you come playoff time. Coming up here looking for three yards to pick up the first. Tug of Iloa going to try and throw on third down. He is going to find Hill here. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. These two have hooked up nine times now this afternoon as they pick up the first. And he's over 100 yards now after that last catch. Already, of course, leading the NFL in receiving yardage. So he's done nothing at all to hurt his cause to stay in that spot. But I've been so impressed with how he's gotten it done. Body control, route running. How about the way he competes for the football at the end of the play? And a five-yard gain gets him to the 42. These two teams met down in Miami earlier this year with the Dolphins winning that one. So they're trying to win here in Foxborough to capture the season series. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. Second down and a run by Robinson. And they'll be stopped at the 28 on a play that started at the 14. They pick up 14. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive. Because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense getting a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. Ready, set. Now with just one second showing on the play clock, we're going to get a timeout. It's just their first, so two remaining as they burn one here in here this third quarter. They run with Mostert off the option. And he'll go down right on the edge of the red zone following a pickup of about seven or eight. A lot to praise on this drive, obviously. I, I know you're seeing what I'm seeing. Those guys up front, they're getting it done. Doesn't matter what play is called, they are handling their business at the line of scrimmage and dominating right now on this drive. Throw with Tagovailoa. Touchdown, Dolphins! Tyreek Hill! 
with touchdown number 27. That ties Priest Holmes for the third most in a single year. And the Dolphins take the opening kickoff of the third quarter and drive right down the field to extend their lead. Mar on for the extra point. And the lead grows even larger here in the third quarter. So that drive consumes nine plays all told. And it ends with a touchdown pass to Tyreek Hill. Following the touchdown, here's Mar to kick it away. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And beyond the 20, but not by much. In fact, just a yard pass there to the 21. The Patriot offense heading back out as we take a look at the playoff picture in the AFC. Well, including this week, three weeks remain in the regular season, Charles. And it is going to be interesting to see how this playoff picture sorts itself out before we head into the postseason. Competitive, entertaining postseason. That's what we're always striving for. But I think we get it during the regular season, too, because you never know how things are going to go during the final weeks of the season. Every team pulled out all the stops to get a better seed or just to get one of those seven seats at the table. To throw on second and six. Jones toward the left sideline, but it's incomplete. And there's another stop. One of the league's best defenses is certainly bringing it again this week. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Now Jones. The Dolphins get there this time, and they bring him down. Brian Burns, he's the culprit, and that is now his 13th sack of the season as his great year continues. It's been a tough one all game long for this offensive line. They're already down big, and now you know they're just going to come after the quarterback in a big way, don't you? Yeah, that old, they just can't get out of their own way right now. It's created an avalanche, and an avalanche is coming right on top of them. And this returnable for Hill. An eight-yard return there after a punt of 47. And it'll be Dolphin football. Well, we're probably not the first, but all of us at EA Sports certainly want to wish you and yours a happy and prosperous new year. And as a celebration of that, a big slate of NFL games on this Sunday, week 17. Second to last weekend of the NFL docket. Later tonight, the battle for Los Angeles, Rams and Chargers. 515 Pacific at SoFi. And then on Monday night, Charles and I are on to Cincinnati. Bills and Bengals, two cold weather teams in what will be a frigid Paul Brown Stadium. This drive starting off on the right foot, 18 yards. Teams get too concerned about the deep ball and they leave too much space in front of them. And these guys have been taking advantage so far. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Hill. A gain of eight there on the play. And that'll bring up a second down in just a couple. Well, there's your leading receiver in the NFL in terms of yardage, putting on another clinic well over 100 yards. Are we taking notes? We should be, right? Because I'm going to go back and watch this tape and really enjoy what I'm seeing. The route running, competing for the football, just breaking down a defense. Shot, 17. From the 31, Tua. He lets this one fly toward the back of the end zone. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there, trying to take a shot, but it's third down. And those two just haven't been in sync thus far. They've done a nice job against him, but still, with his talent, Here you would expect... to him in this game. Fight, 97. Ready, ready. 
Robinson will try to pick it up. And he will be very close to a first down, but I see the closed fist of the referee, and that means fourth down. I'll bet they thought they'd pick that one up because it was a third and two call, and they got awfully close. Now we're at fourth and inches. I wonder if they think they're feeling lucky here <laughs> and maybe want to go pick it up. Sneak. Yeah, boy, that's going to be close. He didn't get much at all there, but he got the first. Looked like they might have held him defensively, but the referee signals it will be a first down. On first and ten, it's Robinson, and he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Well, that's not a run that's going to make any of the highlight tapes, but they've been moving it well all game on the ground. This is another one that keeps them moving forward. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Now this time, two is going to throw it. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. As defensive coordinators around the league tell me all the time, that throw is not for every quarterback because you've really got to drive the ball downfield. It's going to be a tight window for him to fit that one into. And he's going to go down here. A sack. They push him back to the 34. Multiple players getting home there for an eight-yard loss. So that time, Charles, a quarterback helpless, really, in the pocket in the face of a pass rush like that. They were on him instantly. Yeah, that's one where you turn to your line and say, uh, guys, can I get a little help here? And you have to ask politely because, remember, they're blocking for you the entire game. But as a quarterback, you've also got to have the clock running in your head when you need to get rid of the football. But this time, he had no chance. They were on him instantly. And if you're wondering just how quickly that sack occurred, the next-gen stats tell us 2.6 seconds is all he had to throw the football. After the made field goal, Marr back out there to kick it away. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And he'll be dropped at the 21-yard line. So bringing it out of the end zone proves not a good decision. Loses him about four yards. New England's offense set to go. Well, we're still in the third quarter, so there's some time to kind of clean this up and make it look more respectable now. A win, that's probably gone out the window, Charles. But I, I don't know. Do you look at this as a time to just improve and maybe start to look towards the future? I think you have to find something to play for, something to grasp onto until the clock runs out. But Brandon, we've been around this game a long time. This is an outline. You don't get many blowouts like this no matter how the game looks on paper going in. This one has turned out to be everyone's worst nightmare realized. Throwing Jones. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. Well, partner, they certainly played up to their top 10 defensive ranking this week. They've stifled this opposing offense throughout this game. This contest is now lopsided because of their efforts, and there's still a quarter to go. And it's going to be incomplete. He was able to catch it there on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. And it's going to bring up fourth down. The Patriots send out their punter as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. And he'll get this away into the icy winter air. Now Hill to return it. A nice return that time of about 14 yards. And it will be first to 10 as they take over. Miami's offense set and ready to go. Last time out, you remember their drive stalled, but thanks to their kicker, booted a long field goal to at least get them three. Now here, they'll try to do better and find the end zone. And in our experience, 
How much fun is it for coaches to know that they've got a kicker who can nail it from long distance? Now, the hard part is, as an offensive play caller, you don't want that in your head too much where you're relying on it, and he goes out and gets the job done for them. But I'm quite sure he would be content to just kick extra points from here on out. Yeah, absolutely no question. I think his teammates would be okay with him just kicking the extra points as well. That's complete to his tight end, Mike Gesicki. And they're going to get this to about the 44-yard line. Well, up big, but still not hesitating to take some shots downfield, CD. I guess they really want to hammer home their dominance in this one. Yeah, that much is apparent, partner. If they keep completing throws like that, they'll keep that gap awfully wide as they've established already. Off a of play action, tongue of Iloa. This will be caught. It's Waddle. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. A good pickup there, 21 yards. That's the number two receiver in the NFL in terms of yardage. And tell you what, a few more plays like that, he won't be number two for long. Well, that's what often happens when you have competitors running around the field. These guys know where they stand in relationship to yardage, totals, numbers, the whole deal. And let's face it, all of them, they all want to be number one. Now Tua on the bootleg here. Right back to Jalen Waddle for another catch. And he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. So the completion good for six yards. And it's second down. Brings up second and four. Get ready. Watch out now. 50 series. Hey, go steal. Ready? A run with Mostert up the middle. And tackled down after a gain of three. Leaves him with one yard to go on third down. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big time play? Third down, Robinson. The gain of five that time gives him the conversion and makes it first and goal. This offense, number one in the NFL in picking up first downs, and their run game got him another one there. A really good stat to lead the league in, isn't it? Because if you keep picking up first downs, sustaining drives, that means you're controlling the football, controlling the clock, and letting your defense rest on the sidelines. And from the nine, they get this to the five-yard line. As long as you beat the air attack, has gotten them down here. But now when you start to lean on that running game, that's a good pick up there on first and goal. Every day, let's do what we do every day. And the ball smack dab on the five-yard line. Here's second and goal. In motion left is a running back. In motion right is a running back. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Call it no gain on the keeper, and it's going to bring up a third down. Defense simply not fooled by the draw there. Well, they were thinking run to begin with, and what they tell their defensive linemen is, play the run on your way to the quarterback. If someone shows, go get him, and that's exactly what they did. Black 
two and now third and goal. This is caught. Touchdown. Jalen Waddle with a lucky number 13 touchdowns now on the year. And the Dolphins will add on to their lead here in the final minute of the third. Well, on the other sideline right now, it's just absolute dejection. But, Charles, let's focus on the positive. With the lead that they've built here, they've done pretty much everything to perfection in this ball game. They certainly have. Makes me think that their week of preparation was excellent. And they flowed into this game, and it carried over. And right now, I don't expect them to back off at all. They're playing so well, they just want to keep it going. And this fielded right at the goal line. And he'll take it a yard or so past the 20, call it the 21. New England trying to get to place on offense. Well, this has been a tough one for them, Charles. They've struggled really on both sides of the football. And one thing that's really plagued them, the turnovers. They've had issues keeping the football in their possession. And every game that's ever been played, <laughs> all coaches talk about taking care of the football and limiting turnovers. And in this one, after we saw that first turnover, we worried that things would snowball, and it certainly did, especially on the scoreboard. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. What I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while, get at least two first downs, give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. And his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. Derwin James with a pick. And the Dolphins are going to take possession of the football. Boy, so another interception, CD. And it feels like he's starting to unravel a little bit. And as you would expect, still a work in progress here in his second season. He has to start ironing out some of these mistakes, though, because now his head coach, his offensive coaches, they have to evaluate whether you keep playing him and let him work through it or you start thinking about going to his backup. The lone second remains now in this third quarter. Robinson up the middle. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Three corners in the books. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Foxborough. And this is a blowout so far as we get set for the fourth quarter. A very one-sided affair. Historically, this is such a tough, loud venue, but you can hear a pin drop right now. A lot of fans long gone, not used to seeing a lopsided score like this. Robinson with another carry. And he's going to take this down close to the first as he's brought down at the Patriots 14. 132 yards rushing for him now as he has been tremendous all day long. I really like the vision he displayed on that play because he saw there wasn't a lane to completely break off a huge gain. So he found where there was the most space and got what he could. A nice, dirty run that's a positive play for the offense. This offense so far on third down, well, they've converted seven times and could use another right now. This time they face a third and two. They'll try and run here with Mostert. Now he's going to be a yard short. Needed two, but only got one. Fourth down. He handed it off there, but I don't really know if he would have kept it or tried to do anything else if it would have mattered. Yeah, it's not always a wrong read when a play gets stacked up. Sometimes they're just at the line of scrimmage with just too many bodies to maneuver. And as a result, now they're looking at a fourth down. Tua going to try and sneak it. And he will have a Dolphins first down as he pushes forward for a couple on fourth and inches. Robinson 
who gets the toss on the right side. And he'll be brought down this time at the five-yard line. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. A lot of people call the toss a probing play to see what they can get against the defense, to see how they adjust and react. Their probing's working pretty well. That was a very nice run. Six yards on that last play. Here's second and four. Gets it to Hill. It's a jet sweep. Four yards on the play. That's going to lead to first and goal. Well, we've seen running backs in today's NFL get involved in the passing game. Maybe it's about time more receivers like that get involved in the running game. And that is something we are seeing more and more in this league. No question about it. That wasn't the biggest of gains, but it was enough to get them a first down. And it continues to test the defense. They have to think on every play about who might end up with the ball. And they'll let the fullback try and take him home. And he's going to pull his way into the end zone for the Dolphins score. Alec Ingold. His seventh rushing touchdown of the year. And the Dolphins are closing in on that 16-0 record as they add on to their lead. Extra point by Moore, up and good. And this one was over a while ago as they just add on to that big lead. Following the touchdown, here's Moore to kick it away. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. The Patriots ready to try again on offense. Well, I think that the folks here had hoped that maybe this home atmosphere would carry their guys to a surprise victory, but it does not appear that that's going to be the case. There's too much to handle on the other side in this one. Jones throw into the hands of Henry here. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And they'll be left with a second and about a foot. Obviously, this has not been a banner game throwing the football. So what you got to do, you got to kind of down focus, don't you think? Find the tight end. Take some easier completions. The interception last drive. There he hits the reliable target. A good gain on first. Has him set up with second and just a couple of inches now from the 29. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. And that's another play that's painted the picture of this game overall. It's been a blowout. It's been continually fueled by big turnovers and stops for one side and an inability to advance the ball from the other. From the gun on third down, Jones. That swung it. Puts it on the carpet. It's out. And this is picked up by the Dolphins. And he's got Rome. And this is brought all the way back. A fumble recovery and taken to the house for a Miami touchdown. So the defense forces the fumble. They get the score. And a guy on defense becoming offensive there, Charles. And you know they love that. Any guy on defense loves to pick up. it in his hands to try and score himself. In this case, that's exactly what happened. He'll be singing in the shower post game. Extra point by Marr, up and good. And this one was over a while ago as they just add on to that big lead. So here's the kickoff now as he'll get it again following that fumble return for a score. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Another go around now for the Patriot offense. Facing a big fourth quarter deficit here. Things not looking good. You know, this offense, though, they've been in the top half of the NFL so far this season. But in this one, well, their defense has really struggled. 
Throwing to start the drive. Jones. That's going to be caught. It's Jacoby Myers. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. The drive starting with a first down, 11 yards on that pickup. Now, this is certainly one of the bigger losses that we are going to see for quite some time. And you have to think at this point where we're at in the fourth quarter with how wide this advantage is. For this offense, they're just trying to end things with a positive drive and then get the heck out of here. Yeah, if this had been a concert, you would have heard plenty of sour notes in this one. But they certainly don't want to end it on one. They want to put together a few more throws like that and at least have a final drive to give them a little bit more hope as they move forward. Only needing two yards on second down. Back to throw. Jones setting up the screen. Harris. And he is going to lose yardage here. Two yards the loss, and now they go from second and two to a tough third and four. I thought that wasn't a bad time to call the screen. I thought late game, down on the scoreboard, had to figure they were expecting a pass downfield. Yeah, so the edge rushers, they're coming. That could have hit big. You're right. Good recognition defensively to snuff that one out. Finding Harris on back-to-back. -back. And he loses the football a second time. And this is picked up by the Dolphins. And they will set up shop at their own 46-yard line. And now, as with every potential... He's playing the After review of the play, ruling on the field is reversed. So that one overturned. They say the knee was down, and that will not be ruled a fumble. They'll look to throw again. On oh, the throw, led him too much that time. It's incomplete. At this point in the game, they've got to continue to try anything they can. They're still working at it, even though this one feels like a lost cause. To throw on second and ten. Jones. That's going to be complete on the sideline, but, you know, that throw left him no room to run, and the good footwork nearly all for knock. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. So seven yards from the first down here as they come up to the line of scrimmage. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And that is incomplete. Well, it just seems like all game long, there hasn't been a lot of sync quarterback to wide receiver on this side of the football. Yep. Page, quarterback and receivers. Heck, they haven't been on the same grease board when you draw plays up. They haven't been on the same surface tablet that you look at on the sidelines. Nothing's worked for them. They've got to find a way to start matching each other's movements. Miami set to take over. And Charles, okay. we are in the midst of a very one-sided affair. I think this is where you and I <laughs> have to fill a little bit. You want to regale us with old stories of your childhood in New Paltz, New York? <laughs> I don't think anyone wants to hear that, but this is a perfect time for us to start listing MVP candidates, right? The best teams we've seen so far this year, the best games that we've called thus far, how we anticipate the season unfolding. We can go in so many different directions because the game is certainly not taking us there. Oh, I hear the remotes clicking off right now. Straight ahead, it's Robinson. And for one of the few times here today, this one's not going to go anywhere. No gain on the play there, so they're left with a third down and six. That time they're able to bottle him up, but he's having a really nice game. I agree with that. Let's just go big picture, right? Every back that's in the Hall of Fame had carries where they didn't gain yardage or they lost yardage, but you stick with them, don't you? When they're having a good game, keep feeding them. And he's caught on the sideline, but he's not going to have a first down. It's out of bounds, so a big call there. That brings up fourth. Here's Thomas Morstead now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. Yeah. 
Here's Jones. It'll be a 47-yard punt with a net of 40 following a seven-yard return. And the Patriots take over. New England's offense set to go. And they, unfortunately, are staring at a mini losing streak developing, trailing here in the fourth quarter. This would be their third straight defeat. Now a pass here caught by Hunter Henry. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Throwing again on second down, but this time it's incomplete. This one winding toward a conclusion, and yeah, how would you assess how the secondary is played? Well, we just saw them take another shot downfield that was incomplete, correct? Correct. So my assessment is that if anyone's played really well in this game, it's been the secondary. That was the latest example. Yeah, they've been solid really the whole deep. And the Dolphins rush gets home. Down he goes. Bradley Chubb drops him for a loss of 10, and it's going to be fourth and long. The Patriots send out their punter as he's on to kick it away. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. They'll score that a 36-yard punt, and they will take over first and 10. Good starting field position for them as they come up first and 10 at their 38. And they'll send the tight end in motion. They'll start on the ground with Moster. He'll take it past the 40 to the 41, second down. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. 52 blasters. Hand off now to Robinson. And he'll be pretty well stopped in his tracks. Give him a yard up to the 42. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead positive game. Just keep that clock ticking. They are in need of six yards here if they hope to move the chains. Throwing his tongue of Iloa on third down here. Throw left side here, complete to the tight end, Gesicki. And this won't do it. He needed six. He only got halfway there. Here's Thomas Morstead now, as he's on to punt for Miami. away as he angles this one for the sideline and this one's out of bounds should be inside the 10 I think it is at the six yard line and for an offense that is struggling this is not where you want to start from great punt fantastic punt and for all those who wonder what do punters do during the course of practice each and every day the best ones do what we just saw there work on positioning the football and helping their team Jones on first down. He'll get this to his tight end. It's Jonu Smith. And he takes this just about a yard shy of the 20. Give him 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give him a first down. Operating from the gun, Jones. And my goodness, another interception. Picked off, Byron Jones. And the Dolphins are going to take possession of the football. Yet another mistake after the interception there. And guys, you look up at the scoreboard, they just got to be thinking this one cannot get over fast enough. It certainly can. And also what happens when you get this big of a deficit, 
You're supposed to make all the right throws, right? You're supposed to try and obviously get the ball to your own guys. But being down this big, you also take even more chances. And in this situation, that hasn't paid off for them at all. On the other sideline, jubilation and laughter. Again here with Robinson. And he stopped immediately there. Now hang on, we got an injured player down there. Oh boy, that's Odell Beckham Jr. OBJ who's hurting. But not what you want to see this late in the season. Medical staff is going to check on him and we'll step aside for a moment. Ready? An extra corner comes on now for the Patriots. D on third down. Ready. Now Tua. This is Anderson over the middle. And he's going to be taken down at the 28-yard line. Tell you what, partner, the way he's been slinging in this one, I think he should be ticketed for a baseball cap and a set of headphones for the next drive. He's been absolutely sensational. The one thing we both learned about quarterbacks in this league, they often stay on the field longer than you expect. Ready, ready. Ready. They've gone to their fullback quite a bit. He'll get it again. And he'll get this one down to about the 27. Big Christian Barmore was there on the tackle. That's someone who's pretty happy right there. That's the defense coordinator. Body after body getting to him before he can get started. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So the Dolphins have it as we welcome you back in. They've got a second down now as they look to salt this one away. And they'll indeed take a knee. Now right where this set of downs started, they need a full 10 here to pick up the first down and move the chains. Take a knee here. Now Brett Maher for the field goal try. Made his first. This now from 46 yards away. to put this one through and the Dolphins will add on to their lead. Well, ultimately not really sure that they're going to need those three points, but they'll take the three and they pad that lead. Yeah, this one's already wrapped up, but you and I both know if you're an offensive coordinator, you never let up on the gas unless the head coach tells you to do so. And maybe you've actually clicked him off in your headset so you can keep calling plays and trying to add to this lead. This one fielded at the five. Out comes the New England offense to see what they can do this time. It's been a tough go for them, and still without any points here in the fourth quarter. And a big deficit, Charles. But they moved the football on some drives. They just haven't had any points. Yeah, and I know in their minds they're thinking the game plan has actually been working. We just haven't scored points. Well, isn't that the bottom line, partner? To put points on the board, so if you're moving. And now here is another interception. And the Dolphins are going to take possession of the football. Well, partner, I, I got to tell you, I'm trying to think of something positive to say for this offense, but I'd have to be a spin doctor for that one. This has been a tough performance to watch. And I think it's hard at this point to actually identify what's really gone wrong. I guess the catch-all is everything. Doesn't sound like real sharp analysis, but I don't have much else for you. 
And the scoreboard just lopsided, and it's been ugly from the get-go. Oh, now look at this. They're lining up to add three more. A little insult to injury here late in the game. On the right hash, it's a 43-yard attempt. And the kick is good. So you wonder how this one might be remembered the next time these two teams meet. But until then, this game's over. For the winning team here, Charles, that's about as big and clean of a win as you could hope for in the National Football League. No turnovers. While you, meanwhile, you forced turnovers. You didn't allow any points, and you put up a bunch of points. What an effort. And, Brandon, I just have to ask you, that's all the stuff that we saw happen today. Those are statistics, numbers, the whole deal. But my question is, how does one team come ready to play and the other one obviously not ready at all? Well, I mean, I obviously don't have an answer to that, but that was the story from the get-go. One side was awake and ready, and the other just seemed to sleep. So for Miami, they have indeed reached a perfect 16-0, but now still one game remains before they join the 07 Pats and the 72 Dolphins as the only teams to finish a regular season unbeaten.